What is up, Flixers? So, in case you haven't already seen, um, we now have a new client question board. So, what we plan to do is that if you have a question that you want to be answered potentially through a video or a post in the Flex portal, and we'll be posting this across our other pages as well, um, then write it up on the board. Feel free, whether you're in class or anything, to jump into the other room and write your question up on the board, and either myself or Gordy will jump on and answer it. So I'm going to choose the first question that I picked and this was meal timing. Now, does it matter when you consume your calories in regards to time during the day? Now I'm going to answer this in two parts. The first part is going to be answered in regards to bulking your calories maybe towards like later on at night. Um, or to set points and then I'm going to talk a little bit about meal timing and uh, meal frequency. So to start with, on the whole, whenever you are in a ca you know a calorie surplus or a calorie deficit, the time in which you or when you consume the calories does not have an effect on the end result. Now if you leave say you're in a calorie deficit, you're trying to lose body fat and you leave all your calories pretty much you bulk um, a lot of your calories to later at night and you have them before you go to bed, that's not going to make a difference on your efforts for fat loss because at the end of the day, you're still in a calorie deficit and that's what counts. And the same goes for gaining. So if you're in a, you're trying to gain some lean mass um, and you know sometimes you just can't eat during the morning or during the day, that's completely fine. And more you tell you put your calories to the end of the night, as long as that you can still consume those calories before you go to your bed, then technically, because we're in a calorie surplus, it shouldn't have to, um, <clears throat> the timing of those calories shouldn't have too much of an effect, if any effect. Um, I think when you're gaining it is a slightly different story to fat loss, um, because nine times out of ten you haven't eat more than you need, so spacing out during the day just makes it easier to consume on a psychological standpoint. Talking about meal timing or meal frequency, do I have to have three, five, six, seven, eight meals? It's been proven that there is no real difference if you have, you know, from like two meals to ten meals, as long as this, like, again, coming around to it, the calories are in check with the goal that you're trying to achieve. Now, you may look at the other issues it may bring up in regards to if you only have two meals a day. There's going to be probably a period of the day you feel pretty damn hungry, especially if you're in a dieting phase. So adherence to that is going to be a little bit more difficult. Whereas if you space your meals out, you break the calories up a little bit over maybe three, four, five, six meals, then your adherence can be a lot better because you only have you have less time between meals. And again, that's at the end of the day when it comes round to it, consistency is the key factor whether we're trying to lose body fat or gain muscle. We need to be consistent in our calorie intake and what we bring in. So what you have to choose is a, a meal frequency that suits you to your to a T. If you don't like having five meals a day because it's just too much and you don't have time for it, then have four or have three. Do you know what I mean? And if you like you know, to continuously eat, you have points in the day where you set for eating, then that's completely cool as well. Because at the end of the day, this is what's going to make you stick to your calorie goal and the main goal and the bigger picture at point. So when it comes down to meal time or um, meal frequency, it is really what suits you and allows you to be consistent. And again, coming back to the first point, it's exactly the same thing. If because you're so busy one day that you leave all your calories to the end of the day, then that's completely fine. Just consume your calories. If you're having a problem actually being able to consume all the calories then, then we maybe have to start looking at when we have to try and implement something else somewhere, whether it be a shake or something like that. I don't know. It depends. It is very circumstantial and very individual, these types of things. There is not one sort of blanket statement that fits all. And the last one I'm just going to touch on because I think some people may be interested in it is eating around training. Now, some people will be like, oh, I don't know what I should have before I go in training. I get a lot of questions asked that from clients. What should I be having after training? Now, again, providing that our overall calorie intake is met for the goal that we're trying to do, gaining or um, gaining muscle or you know losing fat, as long as that total calorie goal is met. What we what I would um, prescribe or tell you to say 
would be to have at least one to two hours before training some form of carbohydrates and these are easier digesting ones okay so nothing like your starchy carbs like potatoes pasta or rice i would be looking more towards things that you know can like you can consume a little bit quicker and, and we'll go down these are you know fruit it's a great way great thing for pre-workout um I, because I train in the morning, I tend to have oats, but I have that maybe at least two hours before, so it gives time to digest. Um, but if you're going to have something a bit more starchier, then I would say you would want to push it towards the, the upper end of that scale before training, um, because we don't want to be feeling a bit sluggish and lethargic during the training. So, But ideally something that's nice and easy, as I say, fruit, bananas, things like that, like a great go-to for before training. Um, after training, um, hopefully you've smashed your workout, so you'll be pushing hard and we want to kind of refill our glycogen so we want to have make sure we have a good carbohydrate meal after our dinner because we want to you know fill up those stores or fill up the glycogen we've you know used in order to thing me and also a decent pro um, amount of protein between meals i would before training i would keep fats or fatty foods to a low because again, a lot of people will feel quite lethargic with that because they take longer to digest, they sit in your stomach longer, that can make you feel lethargic during training. So I would try to keep the aim to a minimum um, before training. After training, doesn't really matter, um, but before training, yeah, keep the aim to a minimum. And as I said, after training, a protein meal with a good source of carbs. And then we want to be looking at maybe, you know, some of our more starchier carbs post workout. So hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, then please drop them below and I will happily go into things in more detail. But I hope this answers the question, so whoever asked the question. And if it doesn't, again, pop a comment in and I can go into more detail. Hope you have a good day and I shall see you soon, hopefully this week. Perfect. Cheers, guys.